Okay, let me show you how I put this picture together. In this case, I was shooting handheld. It involved hiking, and I often pack lightly. So I'm gonna start by opening up these images into Aurora HDR and definitely take advantage of the alignment. Let's click Open Image, and I'll navigate to that folder and open up the three photos. In this case, I'll choose the alignment option. Now, there's no need for any ghosting because I don't see any movement here on the road and the clouds are pretty soft. But since these are raw files, it's a great idea to make sure to take advantage of chromatic aberration, particularly with the strong backlight we have here. Now, I'll click Create HDR. Let's open up our presets for a moment and the side controls. And I'm gonna save some time and go to the landscape category. Now, in this case, I'll choose something simple, landscape realistic. Now, that looks pretty good, but with the split screen view, I can see that the colors have become a little oversaturated for my liking, at least for this particular goal. So from the color category, I'm gonna take a look here and tone down saturation and vibrance back to their default values, but put a little bit of color contrast in, being careful not to overdo it. The use of split screen makes it easier to see what's happening. Now, back under HDR basics, we need to do a little bit of recovery. I can see that the highlights need to go down a bit to recover, and the shadows up. A little bit of smart toning really helps here, and we've got a pretty good tonality to the image. Now, looking at this here, it's not looking bad, but the sky's a little much. So I'm gonna to tone down the HDR Enhance so it's not so aggressive, and come on down here to HDR Structure. Let's go with less structure and a little bit softer. That way the clouds go back to that nice, moody feeling as the storm was rolling in. We'll bump up the denoise because there's a little bit of noise in the image, and that's really pretty close to what I'd like. Now, as a matter of taste, you can play with image radiance and play with your overall shadows and brightness to dial those back in. Remember, looking at the split screen can be quite useful to compare, particularly how the rock is taking shape. I like that to really compare the before and after, or you can click on the eyeball there to see the center bracket. That's looking pretty good. What I'm gonna do here is come on over to top and bottom tuning though, and use the set orientation. One of the things that's nice is that you can have really precise control here. In fact, I can even rotate this a little bit so it goes up the surface of the rock. And what I'm gonna do is pull down the exposure on the bottom ever so slightly and reduce the vibrance in the background. And on the top, we'll do a little lift. So that worked quite nicely. The ability to actually set that for a custom angle really came in handy with the top and bottom tuning, so we can go after this side here while blending back into the rock. If I look at the side-by-side -side split, I'm really happy with that. What I've managed to do is preserve the colors and the feel of the desert, but getting more dynamic range, keeping the rock and the background properly exposed. So how'd you do? With so many choices in Aurora HDR, there are many ways to do this but the key is using that side-by-side -side comparison as well as some separate tuning for the different zones of the photo to dial in the exact look.